Hey everybody, welcome to the video update. It is Friday, July 10th, after the market closed, probably around, uh, what is it, about 5 o'clock Eastern Time right now. Uh, welcome, what an exciting uh, and, and uh, dynamic week uh, we've had here in the markets. This is the last video I sent out. Um, so we're going to cover a number of things here, uh, and so let's get right to it. First off, Apache. Now this is another good example, okay, where you know I talk about this with some of the students and some of the new folks. Um, that are coming online here watching things and trying to learn. Um, as I mentioned in the video, and as you read in the disclaimer, you know, <laughs> you need to know what you're doing, okay, to be trading. Now, this is one I said in the last video, and if you didn't watch it, you can go ahead and it's on the, the YouTube channel if you want to watch it. But I talked about how here's the weekly chart, okay, here's the same setup here. Daily is on the left, weekly is on the right, and then down here 60, and then the 15 minute chart, okay, so it starts with the smallest time frame here 15 minutes, 60 daily, weekly, okay? I talked about how on the weekly chart, this is what it looked like, okay? Right about here, this is what it looked like. And I said, hey, watch this for a long opportunity. It looks like it might try to bounce. It came down to support, broke this little support area here, but not this one, okay? Showed some volume there toward the end of the day. In fact, here's the daily chart. Let me kind of move over here, um, move us back to about where I made the video, right there, oops, right there, with that, that green candle. Okay, on volume, after a low volume pullback, I said, hey, watch this, this could bounce. But now, here's the thing, it never triggered, okay? It never gave a valid entry. Typically on something like this, when you get a bottoming and a bottom, you want to see it break this, this pivot high here, the $60 area. Or this pivot high, which is, um, oops, 58 or 59.40. So until it breaks that high, no ticky, no washy, okay? No play. All right, at least for me. Now, there's different methods that people use. And now, again, you may have some method that you use. But on the daily time frame, when I'm entering something to hold overnight, it's got to be supported by a daily, the weekly, and the 60. Okay? Got to, got to, got to. Or, again, like I said in the last video, I don't care. There's so many stocks out there. You got you find a way to get something else. There's no reason you have to trade any one particular stock. I, I find it um, entertaining that there are traders out there that just demand that, you know, they get so caught up in one stock and one stock story that they just decide they have to trade that stock. You know, if you've gone through my series of videos over the last several weeks, several months, you'll notice, I, you know, again, it's, 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 I date them for a little bit and I dump them. And there's no reason to keep them around. Keep them around longer term, maybe keep an eye on them. If they come back to some sort of interest, hey, then I'll bring them up. Okay, and that's one of the things I'll bring up in my new video series. Um, and stay tuned for that. If you've subscribed to the YouTube channel, you'll be notified when that's ready which would be very soon. Um, okay, so there was no entry here, okay? Now, notice the next day it came down here, and then it, it, it went down, and it went down lower. And here, look, it even tried to pop up here, but it still couldn't break that high and got a very bearish bar. And what happened this week? Well, oil has been getting hammered, okay, except until the last, I think, day or two. But it, that's not helping a lot of these oil-type names, such as Apache, okay? So this thing's gone straight down. On the weekly chart, let me go back to the weekly chart here and just pull it up to today. Now you can see it's broken the major support area here on the weekly. Okay, So the question is, well, what do we do with now? Well, we watch it. I'm still going to watch it for a long opportunity because now that it's broken this expanding range here, okay, it's broken this low, Okay, and the volume is not really that high, I'm thinking now it, it too could be setting up for a nice bounce next week. I don't know if it's going to. Okay. If it does, it's going to, for me, have to get back up to these la over these last four candles here, okay? And even there, it's not an optimal thing. I'll probably find something better to trade only because there's so much traffic here on the smaller time frames. A lot of dicing up and down resistance areas. It's not smooth as I like. Whereas opposed to here, you'll notice that there's more of a smoother move down here. You'll see it here on the weekly chart, okay? Um, where if it got above this high, it could move a little bit more readily than it could in this grind here. Okay. However, oftentimes you get more uh, of a catalyst, more strength when things take out lows. People are thinking, oh, this thing's going down the sewer, which it might. It may still go down lower. It can. It's in a downtrend. Um, so the, the power is to the downside, actually. Uh, but I'm not showing this name right now, uh, and I'm not buying it yet. But I'm watching it again. I'll just check in with it next week to see if it's doing something that looks interesting. And if the oil stocks are rebounding, this may be worth a pop on an intraday basis Okay, as a possible uh, day trade. All right, so there's the update on Apache. Now, the other one I want to talk about is uh, that I mentioned in the last video is Disney. And I talked about how, um, you know, I didn't want to chase the stock. And if it came down to 112, I'd buy it. Well, look what happened here. It couldn't even, in the, in the midst of all that um, 
selling that hits on certain days, it could not go down to 112. So again, I, I'm not in this position. Okay, it's too strong. Uh, there's no entry. Okay, um, and so I'm not buying it. And this is another thing where you know I watch it for a certain area, I watch for a certain behavior. And if the behavior shows up, then I decide at that time, looking at things, all things considered, if I want to enter a trade. And if not, I don't. Okay, in this particular case, it didn't even get down to my price area, so I didn't enter it. It's still going up here in a grinding fashion, um, but uh, very strong, very strong in the market. If we look at like the, um, let's just look at the spies here. You'll see the spies here kind of rounding out. You'll see here the, the, the really ugliness toward the end of June after I made the video where you come down here. It's just been really volatile, jumping up and down. Here's a big reversal day, and then it gapped down and came lower, gapped up, came all the way back down, gapped up, came all the way back down, went back up. Okay, actually it didn't. This is this tail is not valid. It actually didn't. You see here on the 60s, it gapped down and came down, partial fill the gap, and came up. So this tail is errant on the daily chart. You can see here on the 60 that that wasn't the case. Okay, so a lot of relative strength in that uh, Disney name compared to here. I like it as a long idea, uh, but you got to get you something from a pattern perspective, and I don't see anything there materializing uh, at this time. Okay, so now where do we go from here? Well, first off, on a daily chart perspective, okay, this is untradeable garbage. Look at the look at the candles. There's no rhyme or reason. The tops and bottoms of candles don't mean squat from day to day. There's no buyers or sellers. There's oh, there's a lot of support here. You're hallucinating because you can see it's violation left and right and up and down. Okay, so to put a, an entry above a candle and a stop on the spies, okay, specifically, it's a to me it's a it's a chop best and you're looking to just get the you know die the death of a cut of a million cut or the death of by a million cuts, get the words out right. Okay, um, so this isn't tradable. Okay, what do I think? Well, it's pulled back here to support on the weekly chart. And there is some support in this area, and it may find some support in this area. I think things may pop up, especially if China can hold it together uh, with the government pretty much coming in and doing everything it can to, to keep that market from um, um, collapsing even further. Uh, and the bounce here the last couple of days has been decent. So that may help things. Okay? And, and as the Greek thing gets resolved, you know, that may also help things. You know, on the, on the Greek, um, let me go to the Greek uh, ETF here that I follow. Um, here that it came down. I mean, this also is not tradable. You see the wide range whip. You know, unless you're gambling, you want to buy. Unless you're buying support and trying to sell resistance, there's nothing. You know, there's really nothing pattern-wise to be traded on this thing either. So overall, I think we've come into a support area. This the support area. This helps. If you look here on the weekly and the queues, um, back down to support. Okay, it's not a very significant. There's nothing like this pullback. I don't know if you heard all the people wringing their hands and um, the fear out there, even on TV. With regards to this this latest move, look at it compared to this move in October. Nothing. This is a joke, okay? But yet people were running around with their arms up in the air. It seems like screaming. Look at this, okay? Um, this is not a big correction, okay, at all, and it's down at support, okay? So that means two things. One, it could correct a lot more, especially if things fall apart in Asia. Two, um, we may have some support. My overall bias here to this thing is look, looking like we may get some more bounce next week. Now, this is my favorite time of year to trade. It's earnings season. Earnings season officially kicked off, I believe, on Wednesday. Um, things really pick up next week, and the next few weeks is going to be hot and heavy. It's going to be good, uh, in my opinion. So be watching. Um, we'll stay on top of things. Follow me on Twitter if you want. But uh, I think overall we may get a bounce here. But, again, in the grand scheme of things, we can come down a lot more before we get a bounce. You can see what happened here, and then we went up to make new highs. Okay, and also be careful about the Chinese market because in the Chinese market, you can see here on the Asher, um, ASHR, uh, which is an ETF, um, Representing some Chinese, uh, Chinese part of the Chinese market here, um, it's come down quite a bit. FXI is another one I kind of watch. You can see that on a daily chart basis, these things are dots and spots. They're not great trading vehicles. Um, you're more buying longer term on these things on like a weekly chart or even a monthly chart. But you can see the correction here has come in. If, in case you have been away from the news and had no idea what was going on, um, but really capitulative here. It's bounced here a little bit, which is you know um, perfectly normal when you get a bounce like this um, but then of course you know what's the point in if you want to short here if you want to go long at this point it's too far up to go long on and it's too sharp to go short you can get definitely get clipped on a day by day gap basis as this thing gaps almost every day um, considerably but my main point of bringing this up is this is with all the controls going on all the bearishness that I see um, and you think about what's the one thing that that is the most foreign to a lot of people would be buying this market and holding it and so this this thing I would not be surprised if it turned around and went out and took out these highs. Okay, so be careful about shorting. So this is why you should not be chasing things um, in any way, shape, or form anyway. Okay, 
um, it's more prudent than watching this for a short idea if you want to see it bounce back up, okay, um, probably to this resistance area here around 48, right here, 48, 49. You can look to take another stab at shorting it. Okay, if you want, now's not the time. Um, it is up three days pretty, or two days pretty big off the low. But again, you know, it's it's gapping every day. It's not something I would want to be shorting. And I wouldn't be surprised if this thing went out and took up the highs. I know it's crazy talk if you follow the news, but um, because it's that crazy, I wouldn't I wouldn't put it past this market, especially with um, the government, you know, pulling the strings that it's uh, trying to do. Uh, it's actually doing out there so we'll see what happens but i'm not this isn't a trade it's just an interest interesting thing to think about and the impact between this and greece and our markets um i think there's some somewhat some inter interrelation and uh you know you can't really uh, uh worry about things uh, what might might not happen because anything happens so that's why i like technical trading because you get your setup you trade it you don't you don't your stop gets hit you take your stop you take your loss you get out Okay, hit your target, you sell. Not to your target yet, then you got to follow your plan. Are you supposed to sell in increments, or you just hold on, set it and forget it? If it's my target, or stops me out, and if it doesn't do either, I'm still in the position until one of those things happens. Okay, so there's a number of ways to do this. Now, one idea I want to talk about, I mentioned a while ago, uh, CMG. There's one that um, heavily been historically heavily shorted. Lots of bears on this thing, and it keeps going up, been keep going up. But what I'm seeing here on the weekly chart, um, and as I mentioned here. Okay, that this thing would have trouble if it broke 600 with any sort of force. If you go back a few weeks in my videos, but I said in that video and in, in those videos I talked about, I said what I would really like to see this thing do is go back and test 650, 640, 650 first, then set up and go. So this is what I'm watching. I'm watching the CMG as a possible short opportunity, especially if things go awry overseas and it then translates to more of a downward. Or if things go great overseas, but our market falls apart anyway. Because remember, that doesn't mean you know, markets overseas go well, doesn't mean our market's going to just, you know, um, have a great time as well. Things could fall apart still, okay? Um, but I'm watching this again for it to get up. I want to see, I, actually, now that I've got more information and I've seen this move up here, someone made a bearish call on this, and I don't recall who, um, right here when it broke, when it got down 600, it's been straight up since then, just killing the shorts. Just killing them. In a market that's been going down these days, this thing was going up, okay? I'm loving what I'm seeing here. From I love it when the shorts get squeezed. Okay, and I like coming in after they're done and they've been squeezed out. I don't see them getting squeezed out until it hits 660. Okay, high 650s, 660. So I've changed my target for where I'm going to really start squinting and looking for a way to possibly short this thing. Okay, but it's got to get to 660 first. I want to clean these people out. Okay, right now there's going to be some pain as it gets to 645 or so as it takes out these pivots here, and then 650, and then I think 660 they're going to be crying uncle. And if the market conditions tend to look like they want to roll over, I'm going to be looking for some short opportunities. Okay, selling calls, buying puts, um, going straight up on the name depends. Okay, I'm, depends on the situation when it materializes at that time. Watch this. Um, I don't know when CMG reports. I'll have to look that up. But that's another thing that it could be a catalyst here. So watch this thing, or I'm going to be watching it. You can do what you want. But I'm watching this thing for a possible short. This red bar here, it may end up at, because of this volume pop here, it may go back up and test. But check, check it out overall. You're seeing kind of a head and shoulders type setup here. Um, and as it gets back into this right shoulder, okay, where it may, again, retest that 680 area, 670, 680, you're going to have to have some uh, uh, tolerance for pain and some room you have to give it. But this thing, if it falls apart, like I said, if it breaks 600, um, I think 500, here we come, if it breaks it with authority and the market conditions support it, okay? So there's a lot of ifs, but that's the way trading is. you got to know what you want, know what you're looking for. If you don't quite get it, maybe go smaller shares, okay? you got a lot of the conditions you want. It hits 655, 660. I'm like, well, you know, but the market looks like it's going to go make new highs. Uh, I'll do a quarter position here and see what happens. Then add to the position if it starts rolling over, okay? So there's a number of ways to do this, all right? So check out CMG, kind of follow it with me. Um, and uh, with that, hey, have a great weekend. Thanks for tuning in. Got any questions, holler at me, Tom at TomWillerTrading.com. Hit me up on Twitter. Um, have yourself a great weekend.